Well, hey everybody, this is Dave from Ground Cloud here. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. This is part of our Welcome to Ground Cloud video series. And in this particular video, we're gonna cover the very beginning, how to get started from the very beginning. So what we, of course, are gonna to wanna to do at the very beginning, if you haven't already done this, we're gonna to go to gogroundcloud.com and tap on sign up. And here's where we're gonna get your basic contact info, your first last name, your email, and you're gonna create a username. And the system will tell you if that is a, an available username or not. And you're gonna create a password. This is gonna be a password, a username and password for the management console. And so when you roll through that, at the end, what you'll do is you'll get an email from us that will say, welcome to Ground Cloud. It's gonna give you some critical information. It'll give you some links to our frequently asked questions, which are absolutely critical for you to go through those. And a number of them have video files that are linked to them to really make it cool and easy to see exactly what to do, including videos like this one. And so once we get that started, then uh, you can log into the management console by going to gogroundcloud.com. And then up here where it says log in, we're gonna tap on that. And when we do that, I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna put in uh, the username that I created a company, a contracting company called Digicomp. And so here's my uh, username and my computer has remembered my password for me. So I'm gonna click on log in. All right, and so when I do that, I see right now, I don't see a whole lot because there's nothing yet defined. We don't have any drivers set up. We have no routes to find. So let's get started. I'm gonna just talk about what's going on over here on the left-hand side. Now, first of all, if you're ever quite not sure where something was, go ahead and just type uh, a few letters. If it's about, well, where are my drivers uh, defined? Things like that. It'll help you find what you're looking for. And so, but on the, the first, at the very top, this is what you see when you log in. This is the overview. It's sort of the, the dashboard, so to speak. And in, in a nice small little view here, you'll actually see all of where your drivers are currently at. You'll also see some active gauges here that automatically update that will show you the stops as they are being delivered as a, as a rolling percentage of the entire number of stops for the manifest that we've received and things like total miles driven today, cool stuff like that. But right here, you'll see active routes. You can also tap on view all routes, but again, we don't have any defined yet, so we won't see anything here. But the routes here will show what manifests have come in. And when a manifest comes in, it contains the work area number or the route number. And so that's how we recognize the route number and they will show up here. And we'll talk about this in a bit, but this is the, act, the, the status right now because it's waiting for route manifest data. Right now we don't have any because we haven't sent any in. And so right here where it says send XLS or GPX manifest to, and then there's an email address right there. And so what is that? now? XLS, that just means it's an Excel file. And that is for routes, for ground routes that are on the FedEx customer connection website, right? That mygroundbiz.fedex.com. And so that's where you get those. We have a separate video that tells you and actually shows you exactly what to do and how to get those manifests off of the FCC website. Really simple once you see it. Now, if you have HD routes, those come off of, as you know, a completely different system. The ground system works off of the vision system, but the HD routes, that's all working off of the VRP. And so we get the HD manifests off of what's called the GPX file. And that's also sometimes called the Garmin file. And that's something that we get from the terminal. So if you just ask them for the Garmin file or the GPX file, either they or you can then 
email it to, and right here you are given a custom email address. And so that is, that doesn't matter. If you've got both ground routes and HD routes, they all go to that custom address. Now, they'll all end in that at ground2.cloud, but the first part, that will be different for everybody. So that's because this is the name of my company, my contracting company that I call Digicomp Inc. And so everyone gets a different address. So whether they are delivery manifests or pickup manifests, they all go to that spot. Uh, and then once you send them in and email them, and then they'll actually show up here. Now, if you are on a laptop or a desktop computer, you actually have one other option. You can actually click right here where it says Upload Manifest, and then you can choose a file and literally pick on pick you know, the either the GPX file or the XLS, the Excel file, and literally uh, hit Continue to upload that. So, the next thing I want to show you is drivers. So right now, I've already created a driver named Bill Smith, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna create for you another driver to show you what that looks like. So the first thing that we're gonna do is create a username. And so let's say I have a driver named Patty Bell. So I'm creating a username called, just with no spaces in there, Patty Bell, P-A-T-T-Y, B-E-L-L. -L. We don't have to uh, create and give her uh, an email address, but that is there so for other types of notifications, but you don't have to give that. So let's just create a simple, easy to use password. This is Safari here trying to be helpful and giving me an impossible to remember complicated password, but let's just create something like, oh, let's do X, Y, Z, A, four, three, two, one. And I gotta type that again, X, Y, Z, A, four, three, two, one. Now, if you make too trivial of a password, then the system's gonna complain to you. So just to show you what I mean by that, if I just said like AA123, AA123, and I tried to hit submit, um, we're gonna get an error here. It says this password is too short. It must contain at least eight characters. Uh, it, the system's also picky, it won't let you use like Patty Bell one, two, three. So, and just to show you that, if I said, you know, I even copy that, I'll paste that in, Patty Bell one, two, three, Patty Bell one, two, three, and if I hit submit there, again, it says this password is too similar to the username. So let's go with what I said before, X, Y, Z, A, four, three, two, one, X, Y, Z, A, four, three, two, one, and I click Submit. I don't want Safari to remember this, but here we go. So now I have a driver created named Patty Bell, and I already created Bill Smith before, exactly the same way. Notice that Bill Smith has route four or work area 450 assigned to him, and you know we've already got uh, some time on the clock for him, but let's go over here and click on Routes. We've got to define some one or more routes. So right now I've already defined a route 450. Let's define one more route. And you do that by clicking on add route. And you basically just specify the work area number. And so let's say that was 345, work area 345. And I'm gonna pick uh, the driver that I want to be working and driving, route 345. We're gonna make that Patty Bell. And we support multiple terminals. If we have defined that, you would have been asked when you signed in and signed up originally what your terminal address is. But here, down here, where it says contact and terminals, you can create multiple. So if you're a larger operator that you work out of multiple terminals, we support that absolutely. So I'll click on submit. And just like that, we now have two routes defined, routes 345 and route 450. And we have drivers assigned to each of those routes. So if I click back on drivers, now I'll notice that both Patty and Bill have routes assigned to them. And now we are actually ready to go. So at this moment, if we receive a manifest, either manifest for work area number 345 or work area 450, 
they will automatically get processed and sent to the iPad that Bill or Patty is logged into. So speaking of that, let's go over and take a look at the iPad. Here we are, we've got our app. If you haven't installed that yet, you would just go to the App Store and as it comes up over in the upper right hand corner where it says search, just type in Ground Cloud. There it is, I'll tap on Ground Cloud and then there it is right there. So I would tap on that download cloud button. Now I've already got it installed so I don't have to but that's where this would say install right there if you haven't installed it yet. So that's where you get that. I'm just going to go back here. I already have it installed so I'm going to tap on it and here we go. So very important where it says username. We are not going to use the management portal username that you created when you first signed up for GroundCloud. That's, that's different. This, the app login here is strictly for drivers. Now, if you are both an owner and a driver, well, simple. What you're gonna do in that case is you're gonna create a driver with your name, but it's gonna have a different username. So if your name is Joe Johnson, uh, maybe you created a login or username for the management portal that's just Joe Johnson, but create a you'll create a different username for the driver if you're gonna for the app. And so maybe that's just Jay Johnson, something like that. That way you can remember and they're distinct. You can use the same password if you want, but they would be a different username. Okay. So in our case, we created Let's, let's log in as if we are Bill Smith. Wait, no, we did Patty Bell, so let's do that. So if, uh, let's, what was her username? So let's flip back over to the management portal and click on drivers, Patty Bell, and right here, okay, here's our username. This is the app username, it's Patty Bell right there. So I'm gonna flip back to the app and type in P-A-T-T-Y, B E L L, and then I tap. I'm just going to hit the return key to go to the next field for password. And we picked X Y Z A 4321. And then I'm just going to hit the return key. And notice right when we log in for the first time, we start to get the. This is just going to happen the very first time you open up the app and log in. But you get this you get a couple of permissions dialog. Now it's incredibly important to say allow or to tap on allow for this because if you don't, the app's not gonna work right. We won't be able to get location information and we won't be able to receive updates pushed from the cloud and basically it just kind of jacks everything up. So by all means, when you get the allow access to location, tap allow, super important. And then when it says, would like to send you notifications, definitely allow. So that's just the very first time. You won't get asked that again, unless you delete the app for some reason and reinstall it, then you will. Okay, so right off the bat, notice we see the dashboard. And I'm gonna tap in the upper left corner on the menu and notice that, ah, we've been recognized. This is Patty Bell, and driver name, and then the contractor company name which in my case is this Digicomp Inc. Don't ask me why I picked that, but I did. And we were looking initially at the dashboard. And so right now it says no current route. That just means we have not received a manifest for Patty Bell. That's why it's showing zero. We've got zero stops delivered, zero packages, uh, but we are already tracking Patty's time. If I uh, go to my drive, and I look up top, I see that the, there's a, a clock with a, an animated uh, green circle going around it showing us, ah, we're on the clock, but what's this? Why do I just see blue down below? Well, that's actually the ocean. It says you have no current route uh, defined. So if I just sort of pinch and, and keep zooming out, for some reason that the, like the, the GPS coordinate that's all zeros is like in the, South Atlantic Ocean off of the coast of Ghana. Who knows why, but that's why it, you just saw nothing but blue. So here we are in the States. 
And yet we see we don't have, I go back to dashboard, no manifest has come in. But when one does, this would automatically populate. You would see how many total stops would be listed in the upper left corner here, where it would say stops delivered zero out of, say, 150 or however many are in the manifest. That would also tell you the package count right next to it. And we are also will be showing things like duty time and drive time, things like that. You can also see that if you just tap on time card, that will show that a bit more specifically. And safety, this is where we have safety defined. Let's, let's take a quick look at that. Right now we've got no safety set up whatsoever, but I'm gonna flip back to the management portal and just wanna go through real quick here. Uh, this is where you would define you can actually schedule pickups right here, both recurring and one time by clicking schedule a pickoff. We're gonna have a, a separate video on that. Vehicles, this is where, this is not necessary to define, but we have future plans for this. So stay tuned there. Your fleet map, all right. This is where your drivers would be, would be showing up here. And you can basically also turn on the, the route information. So uh, we have no, no manifest yet, so we're not transmitting. Messages, this is where if you want to send a message safely to your driver, and here's where you can send a message. And so you can either say deliver immediately or deliver at the next stop. This is where you can do that. So if we say, hi, Patty, welcome aboard and I click send that's how that works and then on the iPad that would that would show up okay uh, notification we have no notifications to display yet this is if there anytime a you know a, a route has been re-optimized or anything like that any sort of let's say there's a driver speeding notification those things all show up over here uh, reports that's where you can do all kinds of things like get Excel files exports of time cards and, and things like that. Uh, okay, look at, here's where I'm getting to, under training. So let's click on schedule. And right now we've got no events, but I like to see the calendar view. So I'm gonna click on, instead of the list view, I'm gonna click on the calendar view over here. And I am recording this on Thursday, August 17. And so the way that this is done is, you, you select a module over here, and then on the date, you go over here and click. And so here it is. By default, we've picked that one that we've selected, Distracted Driving Awareness. I'm gonna click on Save. And so now, when drivers log in, they're going to get that safety training module. Let's go and take a look at what that looks like. So. I am going to just log out. Let's log back in here as Patty. And so you set this up in advance. And so let's again log in as, if I can spell this right, Patty, B E L L, and X Y Z A, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so now when we log in, and if we were to take a look at our My Drive, Here's what happens. We automatically are displayed our safety training module here. And this is the one that we picked. It's driving awareness number one. And this particular training module is, is the purpose of it. It's to build awareness of what causes distracted driving. And so we get some context. We get some content about uh, what are the different types of distracted driving in this, in this case. And now we move on by tapping the next button in the upper right corner. And now we have a few questions, comprehension questions to answer. And so let's make sure that we've both read and understood the content. And so the question is, according to the NSC studies show, voice to text is even more distracting than by hand. Wait, that can't possibly be true. Oh, wait a minute, actually this is true. So you know, I've got to get the right answer and when I do, I move on. And so 
let's see, can I remember what a manual distraction is? I think that's hands are removed away from the task of, okay, I got that right. And then, according to traffic safety experts, uh, a cognitive distraction. What was that again? Was that eyes off the road? No, wait a minute. That was when your mind wanders away. Okay, so I've answered the last question, and now I get a signing box. Okay, right here, this is where I need to, with my finger, and so what was my name? Oh, yeah, it was Patty Bell. So I'm going to sign as Patty and... Here's her signature, Patty Bell, and I'm gonna tap on OK. All right, so now that has been completed, now I can go to my drive. Again, we don't have a manifest yet, so we're not seeing anything yet, but that's how that works. OK, let's switch back to our management portal, and if I click on now, if I click on completed training, look at that, it's already there. We have the, the time, the, the driver name, the module, and her signature. Well, okay, confess that was me. But here's where all of that is tracked. If I go back to schedule, I can also notice that here's we're showing in list view. I can just show all of that. I can, I can also drag these in here for the day or by, I like the calendar view. What I can do is under, look at this button up here, add test. So I can then define, let's say I'm gonna make this on Friday, max number of questions and how many uh, to pull from previous lessons. Well, we only had one so far. Maybe I wanna, I wanna move that to next week. So let's make that the 25th. And how many questions do we want in the test? We can basically pull as, as many as you want, up to 20. Make it really comprehensive and here, how many lessons, previous lessons to pull from? Let's just pull from all kinds of them, like 15. And we can even define what's a passing score and what's not. And then you can basically decide for yourself, like, okay, no, I want my driver to still drive, even if they do crummy on the test. And I'm gonna click on save. And just like that, I've now defined a test. The difference with what a test is, is that the test only gives questions that come from previous training modules and the driver can get them wrong. And so we don't give any kind of hints or clues, but this is a very cool way to, you can decide for yourself to use a carrot or the stick in terms of do you want to reward the drivers that have the best test scores in some way or uh, the stick method, do you want to provide some sort of action or, or some sort of action plan for drivers that don't do very well. But this is a great way to cause drivers to want to remember these the content that they're learning over time. Okay, lastly, when I click on contact and terminals at any time, I can look over here and if I wanted to, let's say I've expanded and I wanna add another terminal, I can click right here and give that terminal name, I can give it an idea, however that best works for you. And then here's where you would define its address. And you could decide, do I want that to be the default terminal when, when different uh, questions come up? You can always change that at any time. Uh, here's also where you can edit the details of an existing terminal right here. And also contact and details, this is where you would, also you can see this is where your manifest Dropbox is. Again, that's right there. And at any time, you can edit the details of your self. This is your company name, your time zone, your address, your phone number. Really important so that we can get a hold of you if need be. All right. If I look at fleet managers, if you have a larger operation, maybe you want to have a specific driver or you want to have a, a full-time manager, be able to access the system. Here's where you can define that. Now this is strictly for the management portal. And this is where they can have their own username and password to access the system in order to do management details. And so they, if a manager can, can do lots of stuff, but they can't do everything. You know, they, they cannot uh, delete the account, for example. Okay, so anytime you need to update your, so let's take a look at settings. This is really important. So we've got some different settings here about 
what to do, this is the first setting, is about what to do when a manifest is imported that you haven't defined a route for. So let's say, now we've already defined under routes, we've defined work area numbers 345 and 450. But what if suddenly we receive a manifest from you that is to your Dropbox, which you can see right there under overview right there. Uh, it's also under contact and terminals. But if you, let's say we receive a work area number 700. Well, if you haven't defined that route, it will error out. It'll just give you a notification error like, hey, we don't know, this, this route hasn't been defined. Or unless, if you click on this, allow auto creation of a route. If you do, if you check that right there like that, that means that we will automatically create for you route 700 just by sending in the manifest. Boom, it automatically creates that for you. So you can make the decision about that. Okay, GPS recording policy. If these are iPads mounted in your trucks, I would advise setting this setting right here to always that because we want to be able to track where that iPad is at all times. The only reason why you might want to have this shift and drive time only is let's say you have your employees take that take their iPads home with them and and maybe they're a little bit creeped out by you being able to tell exactly where they are or where that iPad is at all times. So you can make the decision there, but my recommendation is that if you are using iPads is to leave that on always because you bought them, you paid for them, they are your iPads, and so you should be able to see where they are at all times. Okay, what's this? Our next part is stop time threshold. We automatically track every time a vehicle stops but, and then we mark it as a, as a, literally as a vehicle stop, but we wanna have you be able to define how long a vehicle must be not moving before we record it as a stop. Remember, we check every single second. So you could say 10 seconds, that would be, you get a lot of stop events then, right? Because every time there's a, 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 even a stop sign or if it's backed up or a stop light, so maybe that's 30 seconds, maybe that's 60 is the default. Maybe you wanna increase that to 90 seconds. Okay, our next setting here is the delivery check radius. What is that? Well, every single time a driver delivers a stop, we perform a geofence check to verify that their location is within this distance of the stop address. Right now, the default is set to 450 feet. If you are in a very urban area, you might wanna tighten that up. Maybe you want that 300 feet. Maybe you want that 200 feet. Or conversely, if you are in, if your, if your work areas are in a very rural area and you might have a mile long driveway, so you know maybe you want that 4,000 feet. So that's up to you uh, how to set that. So again, the default is 450. And also remember that if the driver is outside of the geofence, they can tap on override and it will still be marked as delivered. All right, the next up here is, what do you wanna know about in terms of how badly your drivers are speeding? The default is that if they break the speed limit by 10 miles per hour or more, we will mark it and notify you that the driver is speeding. And it'll also get marked on the delivery route day. So that'll be recorded when, and, and anytime the driver speeds, their breadcrumbs is actually colored red. So you can define that. You want to make that five miles over, 10, whatever you want. And so... Also right here where it says manage speed limit overrides. If I click on that, here's what happens. We get our speed limit data from uh, a, a sophisticated data service, but they're not always 100% accurate. So every once in a while we get, we report a driver as speeding and when in fact they're not really speeding. So this is a mechanism that allows you to literally correct the system and you can like define an area and say hey this speed limit is actually 55 here and not 45 like your system seems to think it is 
we will be making a separate video just for that. So check that out. Okay, this also, you need to, we have a, a how long does a driver need to be speeding before we record it? So again, we are checking the driver's speed once per second. So you can literally have that as one second and we will notify you. Or if you wanna make that five or the default is 10 seconds and then basically you know, gives, gives the driver 10 seconds to uh, essentially figure out, oops, I'm speeding and get it down before you know about it. But you can set that. Message dialogue timeout. So that's when, if you send a message to the driver, this is, you can essentially have this as, how many minutes do you want it to appear before it automatically goes away? Or if you set it to zero, that means that message will sit there and display for an indefinite amount of time. It'll just keep on displaying there until they tap on the X go away button. All right. Here, the next one up is the auto clock out after. So this is basically just a fail safe that says if they have not clocked out, uh, if the system somehow, you know, if they have not come back to the terminal, you know, we will clock them out. But if, if still they haven't clocked out or, you know, somehow something has gone wrong with our automatic system, you could say, all right, there's no way that they would ever be working past, uh, 8.59, this is in military time, so uh, 20.59, that is just before 9 p.m. And then here, this is the, the auto clock out distance. And so this is where you can set the distance away from the terminal that we will automatically stop the and clock out the driver when they return to the terminal subject to this amount of distance here. Now we, we want to give it a little bit of play just because if you said like, oh, make it, make it 10 feet, well then they'd have to be within a 10 foot area of where the geo, uh, geocoder has defined where the terminal is. So this, this also, you want to make this something that's at least as big as the terminal is. So if you've got a smaller terminal, you know, maybe this is just 500 or if you've got a big terminal, one of the big giant new ones, maybe this is something more like 2000. All right, and then click Submit, and those settings will be saved. Under Billing, here's where you can basically at any time, uh, you can update your credit card, that sort of thing. You wanna change that, and that's it. If you click on Your Account, again, there's just your account details. Back to Overview. Okay, folks, I hope that gives you a sense of what to do when you get started for support at any time. You can basically go to our website, gogroundcloud.com, click on support, and right here, again, frequently asked questions. This is so critical that you go through all of these, like specifically about uploading manifests or installing, you know, how do I install the app on there for drivers? We've got videos for a lot of these too. So for example, if I go to how to, can I upload manifest from an iPad? And of course the answer is yes. And right here I can play the video that takes you through step-by-step. Step. Or if I click on this right here, this video is available on YouTube. If I click on that and, and take a look at it, let me pause that. What's cool is that you'll actually see we've created a YouTube channel called Ground Cloud. So at any time, you can actually go to YouTube and just, just search for Ground Cloud and you'll, you, you'll, you'll come up with our channel right here, Ground Cloud. And this is where you'll see all of our Welcome to Ground Cloud series videos. We also have some troubleshooting videos. There's a ton to learn there. So lastly, if you are looking for support, Go to our website, click on support, and right here, contact Ground Cloud Support, and you can type in your question right here. That'll come right to our support team. And you can also directly email support at gogroundcloud.com. And so be sure to provide your telephone in the, number in there. That way we can give you a shout back. Okay guys, this was a longer video. Thank you so much for hanging in there. 
this is a great system, but yet we still plead and, and beg for your input. So we want to keep hearing from you. We want to hear your suggestions. How can we make the system better? What other things can we add that will help automate things and make your life easier? That's what we are all about. GroundCloud, we want to automate your business. We want to make it on autopilot such that everything gets done and everything gets done well. So we are totally thankful to you for helping us make that happen and also dependent upon you to help us make it better. Hey, we want to thank you so very much for joining us, for signing up to GroundCloud. We want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And we can't wait to see what you're going to do with this system, see how your business improves. We want to hear from you. Can't wait to meet you in person at a trade show somewhere out there on the road. Don't be strangers. So you guys be safe out there. Be sure to check our YouTube channel, GroundCloud, for more videos. We'll catch you next time, folks.